let g be an abelian group and h be equal to the set of all x and g such that x squared is equal to e, where e is the identity element. And we're going to prove that h is a subgroup of g. So this symbol you see here, this inequality symbol, is shorthand for subgroup, so proof. So recall to show that a subset is a subgroup of a group, we have to satisfy three criteria. So the first step is to show that H is non-empty, so it's not equal to the empty set. The second step will be to show that for all A, B, and H, we have the product also being in H. This is basically saying that H is closed under the group operation. And three, we have to show that H is closed under inverses. That means that for all elements A and H, we have that the inverse element also resides in H. So if we show these three things, then we've shown that H is a subgroup of G. So we'll start by assuming that G is abelian, and we have H being this set here. So I'll say suppose G is abelian. So that is our hypothesis. So now all we have to do is show all three criteria. So first, let's explain why H uh, should be non-empty. We need, we need an element such that X squared equals E. That's what it means uh, to be an H. So the easiest element we can think of is E. So note, e squared, well by definition of powers, this is simply e times e. And because e is the identity, you just get e when you multiply e times e. So we have that e squared is equal to e, so this means that e is an element of h. And so h is not empty. And so h is not empty. Right, this is exactly what it means, e squared equals e, for an element to be an h, right? If x squared is equal to e, then x is an h. Here, our x here, our x here is e, right? So it's x squared equals e, and so x is an h, but x is actually the e. Okay, so now we have to show that for any two elements in h, the product is also an h. So now take any. Elements, say a and b in capital H. And now we have to show that the product is an H. So typically what you do at this stage of the proof is you just explain uh, what it means for these elements uh, to be an H. So this means so this means that A squared is equal to E. That's what it means for A to be an H. And it means that B squared is equal to E. That's what it means for B to be an H. Now we have to show that the product AB is an H. So for the product to be an H, that means the quantity AB squared must be equal to E. So the natural thing to do is to look at that quantity. So note, let's see what happens. So we have AB quantity squared. Note I have not done this problem, but I'm assuming um, it, sh it should work out. So note AB quantity squared. Well, we can write this as AB times AB. And I'm being a little bit abusive here with the parentheses. Um, everything here is associative, so we can you know, use associativity on all four elements. So um, it's okay to do that. Now, this is equal to AA BB. And this is because G is abelian, right? This is the, the key step, right? We, that's why we needed this hypothesis. This is because G is abelian. Abelian means commutative, right? This is because G is abelian. So AA is equal to A squared and bb is equal to b squared. And then a squared, oh, a squared is equal to e, I see it now, and then b squared is equal to e, and e times e is equal to e. So we've shown that ab quantity squared is equal to e. This is precisely the assertion that ab is an h, hence ab is an h. So we've shown that h is closed under the group operation. So the first two conditions of the um, subgroup criteria have been shown. Now we just have to show that H is closed under the group operation. So let's go ahead and finish that up. So now take any 
And we can use the same A, but let's be a little more pro than that. Let's, let's do it again. So now take any A and H, just redoing each step one at a time. And again, write down what it means. So this means, this means that A squared is equal to E. So now we have to show that the inverse is in H. That would mean that A inverse quantity squared is equal to E. So the natural thing to do is to look at A inverse quantity squared. So note, what a fun problem. This is, this is nice. A inverse quantity squared. Well, you can use properties of exponents, right? You can multiply the two and the negative one. You're allowed to do that uh, with groups, right? There's no, there's no issue here. And then this is the same thing as A squared to the negative 1. You're allowed to do that. a squared is equal to e. This is e to the negative 1. The inverse of e is simply e, right? So no problems there, right? Um, so this shows that a inverse is an h. So we have that h is, clo is non-empty, h is closed under the group operation, and h is closed under inverses. So all three conditions are satisfied, so therefore h is a subgroup of G. And that completes the proof. I hope this video uh, has been helpful, and I really hope uh, that it made sense. That's it.